Okay, so this guy wrecked this song. Y'all kept tagging me in this video, so now I gotta cover it. You know, this channel is built around what you wanna see and the things you value. So let's check this out. Dominique Bryce, E flat. Come on. Listen, we're going to do this from the top. And here's what we're going to do. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the mystery out of what these gospel musicians are doing. That's why you're here. We're going to make it clear for you. I'm going to start from the top. And y'all in for a treat, man, because I'm just going to run this thing from the, from the beginning instead of just hitting one or two spots. Let's just do the whole thing, man. Y'all better, like better like the video. <laughs> Subscribe. You guys are some amazing subscribers. Let's start from the top and let's, let's hear this intro and see what we got going on here, man. So that part there So what we have there is we have this nice melody line And by the way, when you hear this voice voicing here It usually, when the 7th note This is a major 7 chord, we're in the key of E flat But when the 7th note is at the bottom Usually it indicates movement Because gospel musicians like that kind of Right? When you hear those kind of movements where the seventh note is at the bottom of the chord, it usually indicates that, the, that it's going to move somewhere. So this is a melodic line. And when we have it like this, so that's kind of like alternating diminished chords and dominant chords, if you want to see it like that. Um, here's, your here's your diminished chord. There's another diminished chord. And then we go to our B13 sus. Okay. Another way you could do it is um Okay, which and so you can almost have it as all diminished chords. The, the key in doing this something like this though is knowing how to harmonize melodies with diminished chords. Okay, so that's gonna be really important for you to learn if you're trying to do something like this. Let's keep on going. So that's just gonna be a G minor uh, G minor nine. See there? And then he goes to the C, uh, C sounds like a C minor nine or s seven. Okay. Okay, so, um, okay, so we have this diminished chord hitting this to, to the F minor. Now, watch how he voices this F minor. Look at this. This is an F minor nine. <laughs> this A flat happens to be the third note and the G is the nine. F is out, C is out, <laughs> but this is an F minor nine because this chord leads up to this chord here. This is the actual chord, but look at how he's voicing it. See, because we don't have to use every note in the chord. You can use just the notes that you need to use to get your point across. So um, where was I at then? So now he has this minor seven flat five here when he has when he reaches the A flat. So this part here, this is just an F9 chord, 13. And I don't and I don't remember what he did. And then the next part I gotta hear this. Okay. Yeah. And then da, 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 da. Okay, so let's see. Let's keep on going. See what we got. Um. So that part there. Just grab those notes, man. Okay, so. So he has a temporary transition to the key of C here. And if you look at one of my other videos where we talk about what keys that you need to trans, um, 
when I talk about what keys would be great to transition into when you're improvising, check out that video, man, because all these videos connect. It's practical teaching on how you can do this stuff. And here it is in a perfect example where C is a minor third away from E flat. And so he changed into the C temporarily. So thy name is an E flat chord. Now he's going to C. Right. But then he's right back into his key of um, and key of E flat. Right. Because the F minus seven flat five is a two of E flat. All right. Let's see what he's going to do after that. Hmm. OK, let me hear that again. There's the key of C. And now he's on the two of E flat. So you have that. Um. OK, so now what we have there is um, those are alternating minor seven flat fives and E flat seven chords. So the minor seven flat five is this and the E flat seven is this. But these are clustered, meaning they're closed in. So um, so I'm playing it like this and I'm playing it like this. So when he goes. There's my minor seven five. There's my minor seven flat five. Then when he goes to this B flat, he's on his E flat major seven. And then he goes back to the minor seven flat five in the left hand. Then back to the E flat major. And then when he gets this G, it sounds like he's playing the dominant chord. And then he's now he's at his F minor nine. Well, maybe a B flat thirteen sus. Okay, and then. And then he hits this B flat dominant. Okay. Let's keep on going. So, oh Lord. He's on this E flat minor, E flat major nine. And then he goes to the B flat over D and then he goes this. So what that is, um, the easy way to look at that is gospel musicians, we love using the one to the two. So if you look at the B flat would be a one, let's say B flat's a one and a C minor would be the two. And then go back to the one, to the two, to the one, to the two, to the one. So you just all triads. So if you play that on down, it's just all he's doing is doing it in drop two position where the D is moved down an octave. Okay, and that's all that is. And I have an excellent training both on my website and on YouTube of a, um, how to do drop two. So definitely check that out. And on my website, we should have to practice that as well. So again, this is really, really similar to what we did before where we have, we're starting now in the E flat where the E flat would be the one, the F minor would be the two. So he has this one, two, one, one, two, one, two, one, C. So it's just alternating ones and two chords. Again, just get good at drop twos, get good at harmonizing drop twos with melodies, and then you'll be able to do something like that, right? So. Drop two, drop two, drop two. See? Okay. I, I'm not coming. I'm coming out of it with a different chord, though. Um. Something like that. Something like that, right? So. Again, I like to see, now some of you may say, well, this that just sounds like an A flat minor. But I like to see this as another key change. I like to actually see this as a modulation into the key of F sharp and we're playing the two of F sharp. Now, Sean, why would you say that? Um, so, so why would I say that? Let me listen to that again and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of explain that. Let me listen to that again. Kind of explain 
So he temporarily, stay with me now, he temporarily goes to the key of F sharp. And then he's back to E flat. Now, why would I look at it like that? Because when, when gospel musicians, we love changing keys. And again, notice the relationship because we were in E flat. We went down to C, which was a minor third away. Remember that minor third relationship. Now we're going the opposite direction and going to the key of F sharp, minor third relationship. But if you see it in the key of F sharp, your movements could take F sharp. You could think in your head, the gospel musician is thinking F sharp. Right. So that's why it's more it's more helpful to think in the key of F sharp than to just say, well, it's just a, an A flat minor six. Right. I want to think in the key of F sharp so that way I can go. Oh, see, see, I'm thinking I'm thinking F sharp. <laughs> right. And so that helps me to create movements that I like in the key of F sharp. And then remember to trans back transition back to the E flat. So this is the reason why I like to think of that as being um a, a movement in a different key. Um, so, and, and that that kind of movement there. Um, so we have this nice melody line. Okay. So what this is is we're going from a C minor to G flat nines, G seven, G dominant seven flat nine chords. Okay. So it's kind of like you're going or, but a G dominant seven flat nine looks like this, right? So it looks like this diminished chord here. And so what we have here is this alternating between the C dominant seven. Now remember this lesson is not a super prepared lesson. I'm just kind of going off what I hear here, but I like to, Something like that. He's just playing around with the relationship between the C and the five of C, which would be the d diminished chord. These are fives. These are flat nine chords. These are dominant flat nine chords. They lead to C minor. Okay. Okay, and then we have an, another flat nine. See, so that's another G seven flat nine to the C, but he's just he's voicing it differently. Let me keep on. Um, um. Something like that. I got that last note. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, oh, I like that part there. Um. So yeah, that's nice. And grab that from the screen. Grab that. I'm not going. I'm not going to explain that. One. <laughs> grab it, man. Rewind it. Okay, so in that we have a reharm, we have a reharm off the G. So generally it would be an E flat major. Oh Lord, right? You know, you could, I mean, do a C chord here, right? Right, so it's just a reharm. And so basically when you're doing a reharm, right now he reharmed to a G major, right? And he can do any note within a G major seven chord as his bottom note so he can have a d he can have an f he can have a g he can have a b all of those are acceptable like when you're doing reharm you know so in terms of the bass notes that's what you're looking at so so he went to, he went he started with the d then he went to the f right and now now he's back to his um now he's back to his you know, c minor right something like that Um, actually, it was an F, F7 there on the left hand. How um, 
So that's that's a um, let's voice it like that. F seven flat nine, uh, sharp five there. F E flat A, D flat. That's nice voicing there. Almost done, folks. Oh, excellent. Told you we we're gonna do this whole song. I'll smash the like button. I see y'all in the comments. Come on, man. Leave me some comments. So, something like that. Let's do that with him, man. So, oh, and then he does that neat, that neat little move there. Let's play that. Let's play that little look again, man. Uh, a lot of you, man, y'all desperately want them chords, man. You want those chords bad and you're playing with them passing chords. But listen, I just did before. I'm going to end on that. But I did a training on Monday where I not only explained those, but how to do those kind of passing chords. I mean, I broke down the theory really good. That's on my website. All right. So if you go on there, check that out. It's a recent training on how to do passing chords just like that, where it came from and the theory behind it and how to practice. So y'all check that out. Now, these look like minor chords, right? All right. So that it looks like a minor chord. It looks like they're half step. You're just going up half step, starting on an F, B flat, and D. But they're not. They're actually 1305 chords. Man, this thing is so crazy how these things work. So if you want to know more about that, check us out in the link below. Y'all check out Dominique Bryce. This song is killing, man. Till next time, we're gonna see y'all later.